the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Our text this day is Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9, and we look at it under the, the theme, Surprise on the Mountaintop. <clears throat> Surprises happen in our lives. And there's a little story about a couple. Uh, they were 85 years old, married for 60 years. They were in good health. And especially they were in good health because the wife had, you know, controlled what they ate and so forth, the healthy foods and everything in, in the last uh, decade of their life and so forth. So they were in good health. So they took a rare vacation. And they were flying along in an airplane, and the airplane crashes. Next thing they find out, they're, up, they're in heaven. And they get up to heaven, they meet St. Peter. And he shows them the beautiful house that they're going to be living in. And a maid is putting away their, their precious clothes and that. And the old man says, how much does this cost? And St. Peter says, well, it's free. This is heaven. And so the elderly man, he looks out the window and he sees a, a championship golf course out there. Just, you know, ready for him to play. And he says to him, how much are the green fees? And St. Peter says, oh, he says, you're heaven. This is, it. they're free. He says, don't worry about it. So then <laughs> St. Peter takes him to the clubhouse. And there's a lavish buffet lunch there. And Peter, St. Peter says, don't even ask. This is free. <laughs> and, so, and so they, and so they, they had that. Then the, uh, the old man asked St. Peter, he says, well, where are the low fat and low cholesterol foods and the decaffeinated tea. And St. Peter said, this is the best part. You can eat and drink as much as you like of whatever you like, and you will never get fat or sick. This is heaven. The old man says, no gym to work in, <clears throat> and no going to check my, uh, my glucose and, my, and sugar and all those kinds of things, he said, and blood pressure. No, St. Peter says, all you have to do here is enjoy yourself. <clears throat> the old man turns to his wife and says, you and your brand muffins. We could have been here 10 years ago. <laughs> so my friends, <clears throat> Jesus comes to us this morning and he gives us a surprise, we say, on the mountaintop. And he truly does. As we look at life in this world of ours, we'd say life is hard. It's hard in so many ways as we live from day to day. We can have problems at work, problems in our marriages, problems in our families. We have health problems. We can have financial problems. And then we turn on the news and we're just inundated with problems around the world. And so, yes, our life is filled with problems and troubles and all those kinds of things as we live from day to day. And that can, can crush and come down upon us as human beings. And as we live life so often, and as we see our world living its life, we see that there seems to be no place for God. God is just out of the question. And so the world just could, con continues on without thinking about God at all. And that can happen in our lives, too. And so what needs to happen in our lives maybe is what happened on that mountain as Jesus took Peter, James, and John upon that mountain. Yes, he took them up on that mountain for a reason. Because on that mountain, there was a transformation. On that mountain, Jesus was, was transformed before them as his clothes became dazzling white as... Mark says here, whiter than any bleach could make them. In other words, the, the glory of God was showing through there as Jesus stood before them. Not only that, the a great miraculous thing happened. And so we, we see two guys from heaven come down to visit Jesus. <clears throat> e e Moses and Elijah. Moses, the great lawgiver that God had buried on Mount Nebo at the end of their trek to the promised land. Elijah, who we read about in our Old Testament lesson today, 
that God took this prophet, this great prophet of his, took him up in the chariot of fire into heaven itself. And so, yes, heaven comes down to earth here with Jesus as, as he is transfigured there before us on that mountain. And we see these Old Testament uh, uh, prophets and lawgiver coming to visit with Jesus. He breaks into his disciples' life here. Yes, he breaks into them. They have a, a real experience here on that mountaintop. And, and so we hear Peter saying, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. We need to say this morning, Lord, it's good for us to be here because we also need to experience that God comes into our lives, that he breaks into our lives also in, in, in this world of ours. Now, we might not have a mountaintop experience as Peter, James, and John did. And there's a story told. Charles Corralt was a reporter for CBS News, and he'd take you around the country, uh, that's years ago, and he'd take you around the country and show you various things. Uh, it was always very interesting. Well, he and his photographer, Izzy, uh, w visited Mount McKinley in, uh, in Alaska. And the small plane flew them in to the, where they could on the mountain. And they thought they would only be there for a day. But the pilot said he couldn't stay. He had, a, he had to leave and he'd come back the next day. And he told them there was a cabin a, a little ways away. And so they trudged through the snow to the cabin. And they got to this cabin and it had six sides to it. And one side was all windows, and they wondered why that was. And there was bunk beds on the wall, and they fixed some stew for their, their evening meal, and they were getting ready for go, go to bed, and all of a sudden, it opened up outside. All those beautiful northern lights, just, and all night long, they saw those, those things going through the sky. They were just amazed. That was really like a transfiguration for them there on, on the Mount McKinley. My friends, God comes to you and me. And he might not take us upon a mountain, but he breaks into our lives. He's broken into each and every one of us into our lives. How did he break into our lives? He broke into our lives in baptism. As there he came in the water and the word, and the Holy Spirit made us a child of God as he gave us faith in Jesus. Or we may have been converted later on in our life, but that Holy Spirit came into us and broke into our lives. Yes, that Lord comes to you and to me to do that in our lives also. And he comes to you and me, and he, as he comes to us, our perspective is changed in our life. And the Apostle Paul speaks of that in our epistle lesson today. Listen to what our, he says in our epistle lesson. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Yes, he's saying here that the Lord has come into our lives. He's come into our lives to change our lives. My friends, he's here to change each and every one of us. He comes to you and me through his word, at all times when we hear that word, when we read that word of God, God is coming into our lives to give us a different perspective. The perspective that we are to live unto the Lord. The perspective that we are to live unto each other. That we are to help each other as we live through this life here upon this earth. That yes, the transfiguration comes for us. And it can truly change us. But you know, you don't stay on the mountain. The disciples didn't stay on the mountain either. Jesus didn't stay on the mountain either because that wasn't the end. He had work to do. He takes his disciples down into the valley. You and I live in the valley. We don't live on the mountaintop. And we need the power of God in our lives to live down here in the valley. We need him beside us at all times. The man by the name of Terry Anderson, <clears throat> he wrote a book after his, after his R deal. He was a, uh, a, a reporter. And during the 1980s, you had uh, in Lebanon, in, in uh, Beirut, Lebanon, you had the Hezbollah group taking re Americans prisoner and holding them for ransom and so forth. And Terry Anderson was one of those. Before that event happened to him, he was a reporter. Uh, he and his fiance were visiting England 
and they visited his, his, her father's hometown. And they were walking along the street and so forth, and they saw a church there that caught his eye. And he said at that time he was really an agnostic. But something drew him to that church. And he went inside that church, and he had a transforming experience as he went into that church and looked at the altar and looked at the cross and so forth. And he didn't know why he was moved to do that. But he found out later on that this was something that really meant something to him. Because what happened to him? Well, on March the 16th, 1985, as he was in Beirut, Lebanon, as a reporter, he was, he was taken by a couple of men, shoved into a green Mercedes, face down on the floor, and they sped off. They kept him as a hostage, moving him often. And during that time, he read the, he read the Bible. And the Bible characters came to him and really that all gave him the strength to endure that because he was the longest one held of any of the, of, the, of the hostages that were taken during that period of time because he, was, he endured six years and nine months in captivity there. And he was released finally on December the 4th, 1991. But he says what kept him going was the Lord. What kept him going, we see that as he read his scriptures and so forth, my friends, when we live in the valley, and we don't know what the valley is going to be like for us many times. We need that Lord. We need his word. We need to be students of that word. And so we need to find our strength there in him because he comes to you and me. He comes sometimes in clouds, yes. We read in Exodus, while Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. That says they're leaving, you know, in the Exodus, they're leaving... Uh, they're leaving Egypt and going towards the promised land. When God told Moses to come up on the mountain, Sinai, to receive the Ten Commandments, we read these words. And the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai. For six days the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. Yes, God again appears through the cloud. And then we have also the vision of St. John, in the book of Revelation, what does he see? He sees these things. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Yes, God comes to you and me in a cloud many times. He comes to us this day in the, in the, at the Mount of Transfiguration. And as Jesus is transformed before his disciples, the disciples can see this Jesus, is not just a man. This Jesus is more than you and me. This Jesus is God himself. This is who he says he is, the God-man Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Because there he's shown as the truly God that he is as he's transformed there before him. And if he doesn't take that, there's a voice from heaven that says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Yes, and that Lord is our Savior. He is that Messiah because he is the one that finally went to a cross. He is the one that suffered and died there for us on that cross. He is the one that has atoned for our sins. He is the one that rose again from the dead and says to you and me, one day you're going to have that mountaintop experience as I take you to my heaven itself because I have saved you. Yes. And so Jesus says to you and me, we are to come unto him. We need to hear them. the voice of the Father and saying, listen to him. Listen to Jesus. Listen to that Son of God. And when we listen to that Son of God, and when we see him in his glory, and we see him as our Lord and Redeemer, then you and I can say with St. Peter here this morning, Rabbi, it is good to be here. Rabbi. It is good for you and me to be here in your house of worship today to worship you and to worship you each day of our lives. May we truly do that in our life. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.